Breaking news from around your world on this Thursday, May 2nd, 2019. I'm Larry Rice. Emergency officials have put India's Upper East Coast on high alert Thursday as Cyclone Fani threatened more than 100 million people as it approached with the power of a Category 3 hurricane. The states of Andhra Pradesh, Odisha and West Bengal appear to be in the path of the powerful storm, which is expected to make landfall Friday. Meteorologists measured Fani's winds at 118 miles per hour Thursday, with gusts reaching 124 miles per hour. Forecasters warned that conditions could even allow the storm to increase its wind speed to a Category 5 level, which is 157 miles per hour and above, before landfall. Officials are evacuating more than 1.2 million people from coastal areas and have set up about 900 evacuation shelters, while emergency teams went door-to-door to warn people of the powerful storm coming. Government officials have advised all tourists to leave the areas. Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a cyclone preparedness meeting Thursday with some of his top cabinet officials. Modi urged officials to establish a close line of contact with state officials, make arrangements to quickly restore electricity and communications in the area, and deploy the armed forces to help with recovery efforts. Attorney General William Barr defended his decision to clear President Donald Trump on obstruction of justice after special counsel Robert Mueller explicitly declined to do so. Barr testified to the Senate Judiciary Committee that he had not misrepresented Mueller's report in a summary he sent Congress, even though Mueller wrote in March complaining that Barr did not fully capture the context, nature, and substance of his findings. Barr described Mueller's letter as a bit snitty, but that in a subsequent phone conversation, the special counsel had said Barr's summary was accurate. Democrats accused Barr of misleading Congress by testifying last month he knew of no complaints from Mueller's team. Some said he should resign. Republicans defended Trump and called on Barr to investigate Hillary Clinton. Meanwhile, Attorney General Barr has decided not to testify as scheduled Thursday at a House Judiciary Committee hearing. The Justice Department said in a statement that Committee Chair Gerald Nadler's plan to have staff attorneys question Barr was inappropriate, calling conditions Democrats were imposing unprecedented and unnecessary. It added that Barr was happy to engage directly with members on their questions regarding special counsel Robert Mueller's report on Russian election interference and whether President Trump tried to obstruct justice. Nadler issued a statement confirming that Barr would not testify a day after he appeared at the Senate hearing. He said Barr was terrified at the prospect of being questioned by skilled staff attorneys. Nadler also said Barr would have another day or two to provide Mueller's unredacted report or face a possible contempt citation. WikiLeaks co-founder Julian Assange told a British court Thursday he will not surrender to authorities for extradition to the United States, where he faces charges of computer hacking. Assange appeared via video in court for the initial extradition hearing and signaled plans to fight U.S. prosecutors' efforts to try him on charges he helped former Army intelligence specialist and whistleblower Chelsea Manning hack a Pentagon computer network. The court set a procedural hearing for May 30th. U.S. prosecutors say a 2010 leak from the hacking led to the posting of thousands of classified military documents, which mostly related to the U.S. war efforts in Iraq and Afghanistan. Assange was arrested and removed from the Ecuadorian embassy in London last month after spending seven years there under protection of asylum. Mark Summers, Assange's attorney, said the 47-year-old fears being extradited to the United States and possibly locked up at the U.S. Navy prison in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido conceded Wednesday that this week's anti-government protests did not yet have the backing of enough military defectors to oust President Nicolas Maduro. Maduro has accused President Trump of orchestrating Guaido's Tuesday coup d'etat attempt. He called for supporters to show utmost loyalty and take to the streets to defend his socialist government. Maduro called for two days of action this weekend. 
Secretary of State Mike Pompeo accused Russia of propping up Maduro and said the U.S., which backs Guaido as the South American nation's leader, was leaving all options on the table, including military action. Russia said the United States was spreading false information in an information war. Japan's Prime Minister complimented North Korea's Kim Jong-un Thursday and said he would meet the North Korean leader unconditionally. Shinzo Abe, the only head of state in the region who has yet to meet with Kim, made the remarks during an interview with local newspaper Sankei Shimbun. Abe said, I would like to hold a frank conversation. North Korea has yet to demonstrate a strong interest in a summit with Japan. Pyongyang instead has regularly issued statements condemning Japan for its wartime past and for its recruitment of Korean comfort women forced to serve in military brothels during World War II. Kim has failed to reach a denuclearization deal with the United States, but has continued the summit diplomacy he began in 2018, meeting most recently with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Vladivostok. He's also met Chinese President Xi Jinping more times than with South Korean President Moon Jae-in, who is often credited with easing tensions with the North. The Trump administration on Wednesday filed a formal request in a federal appeals court to strike down the entire Affordable Care Act. Previously, the administration had said parts of former President Barack Obama's signature health law, including the Medicaid expansion, should remain in place. But in late March, the Trump administration shifted its position, and the appeals court filing seeks to have all of Obamacare struck down as unconstitutional. The filing came in a challenge to Obamacare by Texas and 17 other states led by Republicans. In December, a federal judge in Texas found the law unconstitutional, but California and 20 other Democrat-led states appealed. The appeals court will hear oral arguments in July. The Federal Reserve on Wednesday concluded a two-day policy meeting by leaving its benchmark interest rate unchanged and saying it saw no strong reason to raise or lower interest rates in the near future. The patient approach reflects signs of a healthy economy, such as strong job growth, offset by unusually low inflation. We think our policy stance is appropriate at the moment. We don't see a strong case for moving it in either direction, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said after the meeting. President Trump has called on the Fed to cut rates to boost the economy, but the decision to hold rates steady was widely expected. Still, Powell's statement appeared to disappoint investors. The three main U.S. indices gave back early gains and closed down by 0.6% or more. SpaceX has confirmed that its crew capsule was destroyed in a ground test two weeks ago. A company vice president told reporters Thursday it's too soon to know what went wrong during the April 20th test or whether the capsule's March spaceflight contributed to the failure. Flames engulfed the capsule a half second before the launch abort thrusters were to fire. SpaceX said it cannot access the test stand at Cape Canaveral, Florida because of toxic fuel contamination. A SpaceX spokesman says the cargo version of the Dragon capsule, meanwhile, is safe to fly to the International Space Station. SpaceX is set to launch a Falcon rocket with station supplies early Friday morning. The flight was delayed by a power problem that occurred at the space station Monday and was fixed by Thursday. With Boeing's 737 MAX jets grounded after two deadly accidents, U.S. airlines will operate about 200 fewer daily flights than planned through the heart of the peak summer season. That's around 35,000 seats lost every day. The grounding of MAX jets will leave other planes more crowded. For some passengers, the grounding of the 737 MAX will mean a change in travel plans. Southwest, American, and United are the three U.S. airlines that used the MAX before regulators grounded the jet in mid-March. They are taking passengers whose original itinerary included a MAX jet and rebooking them on flights using other aircraft. That could mean a non-stop flight turns into a connecting flight. Or it might arrive several hours later than the traveler expected. Travelers who don't like their new itinerary have limited options, but they can seek a full refund, even if they bought a non-refundable ticket. 
And that's your update for this Thursday, May 2nd, 2019. I'm Larry Rice. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.